and uh, this is Rabbi Tabra Lansberg from uh, Temple Emmanuel. some sacred texts from, from Jewish tradition and looking at the question of the form of abstinence, um, particularly fasting, but all form of abstinence. It was the teacher Rav, and Rav simply means teacher. That's how he was known. We don't have his name. He was just universally known as teacher amongst the Jews. He said, man in the life to come, when this world is over, and the world to be, Man in the life to come will have to account for every enjoyment offered him that was refused without sufficient cause. Rav Isaac of Yitzhak said, Isn't the number of things forbidden by the law not enough for you that you venture to add of your own accord by your inconsiderate vow? I want to start from the Jewish tradition, which says when we look at abstinence in, not simply in terms of food, but in the broad perspective of all that from which we abstain, there is, I think we could say minimally, um, minimally I would say there is a um, ambivalence, ambivalence within Jewish tradition. Um, there's a section of sacred teaching, a section of Talmud, an entire section on fasting. It's called Ta'anit. It simply means fasting. And yet, in this section on fasting, Shmuel says, whoever sits in observance of a fast is called a sinner. So hello, you may not invite me next year. <laughs> and I, but I do come from a tradition which has obligatory fasts. So let me continue for another moment, if you will. Rabbi um, Alazar disputed him. He stakes out the opposite position in the same conversation, and he says, no, 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 one who takes a fast upon himself is called sacred. And so we have this, this conflict over this argument amongst rabbis about what does it mean to fast? They're going to offer a, a, a way of bringing it together, and Elazar says, a person should always consider himself as though a sacred object is immersed in his bowels. A person should always consider himself as though a sacred object is immersed in his bowels. I'm gonna use the words of um, the literary critic Adam Kirsch who says, there's something sacred literally inside of us. Our bodies are not just envelopes for our souls, but a kind of holy cargo and we have to treat with decency and kindness. And so how can therefore fasting either lead you to be a sinner or lead you to be sacred? Well, if you could fast without causing yourself true bodily harm, then it's sacred. But if fasting actually harms the body, then you're actually committing a sin to undertake it of the fast within Jewish life, and there are many of them, many more than I would say are probably observed by the majority of Jews. The fast, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, it is a 24-hour fast, not a, sundown, a sunrise to sundown fast, but a 24-hour fast in the context of Ina Nefesh, of, of, um, of um, afflicting the soul. There's no anointing oneself, no sexual relations, nothing making up, no pleasure of any sort, no wearing leather shoes, not even wearing comfortable shoes or any shoes for some. Um, if one, for example, is pregnant, one's not allowed to fast in case it might do harm to the body, for example. But the question, if I'm starting this way, I suppose the next question is why within Jewish tradition why do we have fasting? Because we do have fasting. 
And so much of, of my tradition speaks of fasting as a way to impact or influence the divine. And I don't mean the divine within, I mean God Almighty outside. That there's seeking God's compassion. Fasting as a way of seeking God's compassion. There's uh, so much writing in a time of calamity or struggle, how a person or a community will impose a fast upon themselves. Come from a desert place, they usually talk about a drought. What fast should one undertake if there's a drought? And have the leaders of the community take a, a, a fast upon themselves for three days, and then they'll take it for seven days, and then they'll get everybody to take it. And if that doesn't work, then they'll put the stricter fast upon themselves. But there's also in times of war, I have come from a tradition which speaks of fasting as a way of seeking God's direct intervention in times of strife and struggle or in times of living under foreign rule, of seeking alleviation from oppression. It says in, in Talmud, in the section called Brachot, which means blessings, it says that fasting is made in lieu of the offerings that one would bring when the sacred temple stood. And the prayer one would say in making a fast is, may it be his will that he should consider the fat and the blood that is reduced by the fast as if I offered it upon the altar itself. And the last, I guess, a, a almost preamble. Within my tradition, I come from a tradition where um, the teachers and the leaders would often fast as a way of connecting with God. Moshe, Rabbeinu, Moses fasted for 40 days to be able to be on Sinai in communication with God directly. I want to start from a very modest position, though, which doesn't simply speak of fasting and the impact it might have on God outside, but fasting and the impact it has on the individual. And, and in here, in many ways, I hear so many of the similarities. Um, Simon the Just had said that when he encountered a young man fasting, he asked himself, why? Why are you doing this? You're a beautiful young man. What are you doing? And the man said, well, I'd seen that there was an evil spirit pursuing me because I know I'm beautiful and I was looking in the river and I was Narcissus-like that they didn't go to the Greek. And I said, I need to cleanse myself of this trait. And so I took the vow of fasting upon myself. And the command, Kiddushim to you, you shall be holy, is understood as an opportunity, I guess, or a call to fast in order to arrive at holiness and purity. And so fasting within Jewish tradition in many ways is tied into our larger tradition of self-discipline, and particularly, I would say, in terms of food. Um, all of the laws of kashrut, it's very, very hard to keep kosher, to follow the dietary laws well without radical self-discipline. And fasting is one tool within this, but it is not, I guess, the, the only one within it. So my closing remark now. Um, and I'm going to turn now to the Lubavitcher Rebbe to speak to the question of abstinence and its role in healing many of today's ills, which was the large question put on the table. The Lubavitcher Rebbe says, we live in an age where we have, for so many of us, so much food and fasting can become a distraction rather than serving its spiritual purpose, which is repentance, which is repair and healing within, which allows one to heal the world around it. And he suggested that we should instead turn to redeem our sins with charity by taking our funds and all that we have and using them as well to turn out as an act of abstinence. A financial abstinence, you would say, is a way of also radically increasing the goodness in our world. I'm going to stop and use my time, but thank you again.